welcome to power system operation and control course in which uh, the lecture module 1 consists of structure evolution and also we'll see the main requirement for the power system operation and control uh, before going as you know this electricity is one of the important essentials for any development of any country and also for the mankind the commercial use of electricity started in the late 1870s however the electricity the invention of the electricity took place very beginning in the early phase of the electricity development or evolution this was only used for the lightning purpose there was generators as well as the loads they were together and it was localized to certain local areas the first electric power system which which started in 1982 and it was invented by Thomas Edison at the Pearl State Station in the New York USA. This power system was the DC system and it was consisting of the DC generators, the cables, fuses and also the load. It was feeding the power to the 59 customers and the, it was feeding in a radius of approximately 1.5 kilometer in that one the operating voltage it was 110 volt and mostly it was giving load to the incandescent lamps means simple bulbs and at that time the four generators of 25 hp means uh, hp were used and it was the dc generator in 1884 this motors were developed by the frank sprague and they were added to this power system and again, it were, it were, uh, these were basically the DC motors. After addition of the motors, the electricity, the use of electricity was very prominent and the people thought that electricity is the better way to utilize the energy. But in 18, here, in 1886, the limitation of DC become apparent. The main problem of the DC is the high loss because it was not possible to raise the voltage in the DC. It was only that people were using for the increasing the voltage by the several series DC generators in the cascade way. And adding this cascade again, there's a lot of problem in the insulation that's between the different generators and also it was not safe. At the same time, it was required that anyhow, if we can increase the transmission voltage or require the voltage so that the current requirement is less at the same time we can reduce the voltage drop. At the same 1886 the transformers as you know the transformers are used for the AC power system and the AC distribution system was developed by the William Stanley of the Westinghouse and the Westinghouse basically here the purchase the complete patent of this whole AC system. Uh, in 1889 the first AC transmission system was developed in USA. It was basically the in between the Willamette Fall and the Portland, Oregon. At that time, it was not possible to use the DC system because the distance from this Willamette Fall and the Portland, Portland, it was more than 21 kilometers. So the DC was not possible that we can have the DC generators as well as the DC transmission. So the first AC single phase transmission system which was the 4 kilovolt and it was for this 21 kilometers. Then the DC becomes, it was not feasible, it was not even the possible to power flow over the long distance with the DC. At the same time, there were the other development for the polyphase AC system which was the developed by the Nikola Tesla and he had the patent of all this AC generators, motors, transformers and the AC transmission line. At the same time, the Westinghouse purchased it. Then the controversy started whether we will go for the DC system or we have to go for the AC system. This DC as invented by the addition, he advocated for the DC system, but the Westinghouse which had the patent for all the AC systems, then he it was advocating for the AC system. At the same time, even the addition wrote uh, in the magazine that the AC is used for the killing of the people. 
because at that time in the very beginning ac was give, was used to giving the sack to the people but no doubt this ac won the match won this whole scenario due to the several reasons that the voltage increase was possible at the same time it is a simple to generate and the to utilize the ac power compared to the dc power so then this slowly and slowly this ac power become prominent and the dc was phased out in 1893 the first three phase line was again was invented and developed and it was between this niagara fall that was the 30 kilometers from california and it was operated at the 2.3 kV of the supply this first three phase uh, transmission line was again it was the remarkable achievement in the three phase system and you can see right now we have the three phase transmission system rather than the single phase transmission system especially in terms of the transmission the early voltage if you see that witness that up to 1921 we had the voltages of the different voltages like we had this 16 kV 44 kV even to 60 kV but later from the 1990 uh, 1922 the voltages keep on increasing the reason behind this increase in the voltages that we can reduce the current and therefore we can reduce the losses in the system at the same time we can reduce the voltage drop so in 1923 the 220 kv voltage level was invented and it was came into the operation similarly in 1935 it was 287 kv and in 1953 it was here 330 kv so you can see it is a continuous here voltage is keep on people were trying to go for the higher voltages again these were possible due to this the insulation level and also the right of way problem and the insulator etc the development at the same time then in 1990 this we achieved this 1100 kV ac transmission system so it was at that time it was realized that we should go for some standard because it is a witness that the loads at they were very near to the load centers the generating generation as well as load they were put together so then it was realized to have interconnection and then for the interconnections we should have the standard voltage level so the standard voltage level again adopted the different standards for the different country and normally the voltage level 115 kV 130 one here 38 kV 161 kV and up to 230 kV came into the category of high voltage transmission lines and more than that that 345 which is very common in this usa and in canada country here the 500 and 765 kV kV transmission line they were known as the extra high voltage transmission line again if you will see the frequencies the frequencies also since the a generator which was feeding load very near to that and it was not interconnected so the frequency also it was varying it was 20 25 hertz you can see here 50 hertz 60 hertz and 125 hertz along with the 130 133 kilohertz was also possible but we know for the integration we should have the same frequency throughout the system so some country like here in india and other asian country and european country they adapted for the 50 hertz uh, operation and the usa and the canadian country they just use the 60 hertz so again if you see the in terms of generating voltages since the generators were earlier the dc later they were invented the ac generators and the voltage also the keep on increasing they had the different voltage levels and again it was possible so far we have up to the 33 kV transmission and uh, the generation of uh, generating voltage and here in india even we have the 21 kV generation then what we do then we use some generating transformer to lift the voltages at the higher voltage and then we transmit power to the over the transmission line finally it goes to the customer through the distribution transmission lines so it is well established that the generation as well as utilization is the suitable in terms of the ac part means ac generation as well as the 
AC distribution is the economical, cheaper and the efficient in terms of here in terms of operation and its maintenance. But the transmission part again there is uh, some doubt that whether we can go for the only AC or whether we can go for the AC as well as the DC. If you will see there are some advantages of DC, I will come to that point later. HVDC system basically what we do, we normally we connect the two systems with the different frequency we can do for. So, the first mercury valves basically they were invented here in 1950s. Then first HVDC transmission, transmission between the Sweden and the Gotland island of the Sweden itself, it was came into the operation in 1954. So, this first HVDC uh, transmission between the Sweden mainland and the Gotland island, it was not possible to interconnect with the AC transmission line. Because this Gotland island, the operating frequency was 60 hertz, uh, however, the main island it was the 50 hertz. So, and also this distance was the 60 miles. So, it is not possible to have a cable of more than 60, even though 50 kilometers. So, only the option at that time left that we should go for the HVDC. Uh, high voltage DC transmission system was came into the existence and this is the first which came into 1954. If we will compare the advantages and the problems in HVDC transmission system, let us first go the what are the problems in HVDC, uh, HVAC transmission system. The main problem in HVAC system is as we know, although I have written on the second point, it is your stability. We know this one equation here that is a power, it is a approximate equation that is a V1, V2 upon X that is a reactance between these two line. Here it is your sine delta and delta is angle between the voltages here V1 and the V2. So, we know this here, the P, the maximum power which can flow in AC transmission system depends upon the voltages and this angle and the reactance of the line. This delta cannot be more than pi by 2 degree, that is 90 degree. So, the stability concerns here is one of the big issue. Even though here the delta can be theoretically 90 degree, but we cannot operate our power system at 90 degree because if there is some deviation, some fault in the system, our power system will lead to in the collapsed state and unstable power system. So, always we operate this delta should not be, uh, it should be always less than 30 degree or that one. So, the stability is one of the big issue. So, what we do if our system is weak and the less stable, then we use some other, we use some other devices to improve the stability of the system. Another is the reactive power loss. Reactive power loss is one of the, normally this first you have to go for the, you should understand the real power loss. Real power loss is nothing but, it is your uh, I square R loss normally we call, or sometimes if loss is in the core, it is also real power loss. But the reactive power loss is nothing but the reactive power loss that is I square X, X is the, you can say reactance of the line. And this is the summation of other which is the generated reactive power and normally it is voltage is square divided by Xe due to the charging of the transmission line. So, the reactive power loss is one of the concern in the AC system. Another is the point third is the current carrying capacity of the transmission line or the cable. It is you can know if your transmission cable is more than 50 kilometer and you are not taking a load at the receiving end, your sending end current will be even though more than it is the rating of the cable. What will happen? If you are going to take even though a small amount of power at the receiving end, this the current will exceed its rating and this cable will burn or rapture and it is not possible to the transmit the power. So, that for the transmission line as well, it is not possible for going for more than 500 kilometers overhead transmission line that is the bare conductors and 50 kilometers for the cable. And this is due to the current carrying capacity and always it is a limited in the AC system. Another concern in the HVAC transmission system is the Ferranti effect. You know this Ferranti effect is nothing but when the receiving end voltage at the no load or likely load is more than your sending end voltage. So, what we do, we normally go for some compensating, compensating devices and normally we use the reactors. If line is very long, we use the line reactors in the transmission system 
so that we can reduce the voltage at the receiving end. This normally happens if your system is collapsed and or you are energizing that line from your sending end and receiving end if it is a lightly loaded or there is no load, your receiving end voltage will be higher and what will happen again your protective devices, they will sense the voltage and they will again trip your transmission line. So, it is not possible under until unless you are controlling that voltage. So, this is your parent, uh, front effect. Now, let us see what are the advantages here in this HV DC transmission system. There are so many advantages of HV DC system, but also it has some disadvantages and then we will see some disadvantages as well. The various advantages of HV DC transmission system that it requires less space. Less space in terms that we have normally the two wire system, we may have the homopolar operation, we may have the bipolar operation, we may have the monopolar operation. So, only we require the two conductors maximum in the DC system and also here there is no compensating devices required although we require the converter stations as well. So, in overall the DC stations are requ they require less space. In this HVDC transmission system we can also use the ground as a return path. Normally in the monopolar operation this one is the positive current which is there negative phase is there then ground can be used at the return path where it is not possible in HVAC transmission system. Also if you will see the corona loss is minimum in this your DC transmission system and there is no concept of the reactive power at all. So, there is no reactive power loss in this HVDC transmission system. It is also the it is cheap for your long distance transmission of power. So, this HVDC transmission is cheap for the longer distance of the uh, transmitting the power over the long distance. Now, normally if you will see the cost of AC here, this is your if it is a distance, distance and this is a cost we can write, then your here this is your AC system and this is your DC system. So, the cost here this is your normally it is known as a break even point here. So, the cost initial cost of the DC system is transmission system is more than your AC system you can see here. But once it is a distance is more than this break even point, then your DC becomes cheaper compared to the AC transmission system. So, this distance earlier it was somewhere 700 to 800 kilometer, but now it has reduced to even to 605 to 600 kilometer. So, if you want to transmit power more than 600 or 600 kilometers, the DC is the cheaper option for the transmission of power compared to their AC transmission system. Now, normally nowadays it is not only the transmitting power, DC uh, power from one end to another end, but we can also use this DC for the several other purpose. So, normally the use of the DC is to transmit, transmit, transmit bulk amount of power. and another is to control this power. The control of power is one of the big advantage of DC system. In AC we cannot control the power if uh, you know the current always follows the minimum impedance path. So, if AC system is interconnected you cannot control the power over the transmission lines unless until if you are having the parallel lines then one you can trip it. So, you can change the impedance then the power will be different in the different line. But here in this DC system, we can that is a control the power that is one of the greatest advantage of having the like here I have written this power control is possible in the DC system. Also this in the advantage as we are looking at the advantages of SVDC transmission system, it has no skin effect. You know this skin effect is nothing but here if you are having uh, uh, let us suppose this is your conductor. So, current always follows the outer sider of from the center to flow in the AC system. So, what it 
Thus, normally the resistance of this conductor is increased because the current is uniformly distributed over this conductor. So, always this RDC that is the resistance if the DC current is flowing in the same radius of conductor is less than your R if AC current is flowing in the same conductor. So, due to th this is due to the skin effect of this transmission line. And also as we say that is here the Ferranti effect. There will be no Ferranti effect in the HVDC system because there is no charging at all. That the capacitance is no doubt they are formed, but it is not charging and it is not following any charging current over that one. So, for the DC, you know, uh, this capacitance just behave as an open circuit in the HD state. Another the great advantage of HVDC transmission is that here asynchronous operation is possible. Asynchronous possible is uh, possible here, it is nothing but you can interconnect two frequency systems together with the help of the DC system. In the AC, always we must operate all our power system, all the electrical appliances, operators, elements at the same frequency level. But here in the DC, DC you can interconnect two different frequencies with the help of HVDC. So, this is called asynchronous operation is possible. As we saw the example of the Gartland Island, that which was interconnecting the your Sweden mainland and the Gartland Island, do both were operating with different frequencies. And then it was only possible to go for this HVDC system. So, this is one of the great advantages that we can have the two different frequency system we can interconnect. Here also the short circuit power in the DC, here there is no short circuit. Even the AC, if you are keep on interconnecting, what will happen? The short circuit level at that point will keep on increasing so that you have to go for the larger the protective devices like circuit breaker rating you must increase. But here this is not a sort of that concept. Another this, the great advantage which was the limitation of AC system was that there is no stability problem. Here this formula does not apply this here is V1, V2 upon X sin delta is no more applicable for the DC system. So, the stability concept is no more there. So, the system DC system is much much more stable compared to the your AC system. If you will see the disadvantages, let us come to the various problems in HVDC transmission system. As we saw in the beginning that the cost of the terminal equipment, even though the cost here, if you will see here, this cost for the DC is more here compared to the AC system. This is due to the terminal equipments of the DC system because we require the converter circuit even though you are going for the shorter distance. You should have the two uh, converters, one is no, uh, known as rectifier, another can be as inverter and again we should go for other auxiliaries for these converter stations. For example, we should go for the cooling because there will be losses in this thyristors or GTO valves and we require a huge cooling and better cooling otherwise this will get burst or puncture. So, here this cost of the terminal equipments are very high. But nowadays due to the development of a very high power semiconductor devices, especially power electronics devices, then it is possible to reduce that cost as well. So, now the cost of the terminal equipments are the keep on reducing as we are going for higher and higher rating of the thyristors and other power electronic devices. Another concern here is your introduction of harmonics. As you know here, in the converter, we are using the power electronics devices and these devices are using some off and on control. So, means we have to fire, use the firing circuit. Due to this off and on, they never produce the perfect sinusoidal and therefore, some harmonics are introduced in the system and they are not good. No doubt, we use some filters to filter out these harmonics. At the same time, some of the harmonics, they enter into the system especially we use the filters for the lower order harmonics, but higher order harmonics we allow to enter into the system. The reason behind that for the lower order harmonics, they are having the large in the magnitude. In the magnitude of the lower order harmonics are higher and also the filters require the size will be less. So, normally we filter out this larger magnitude of harmonics and the smaller magnitude of harmonics we allow because it is not possible to go for filters for all the harmonics. And at the same time, 
there are the two types of harmonics one is your characteristic harmonic another is a non characteristic harmonic if you are using a uh, six pulse converter so normally this harmonics h is nothing but your np plus minus one harmonic here n is your nothing but your starting from one to it is integer value and p is your pulse number So for six pulse converter here we are going to have fifth, seventh, and eleventh and thirteenth harmonics. So the magnitude of the these this harmonic uh, contents basically these are they are called the characteristics harmonic. Other than that also due to the overlapping of the current because current cannot be changed instantaneously in the valves. So there is some changeover of current. So they introduce some non-characteristic harmonics. And it is not possible to the filter out. So, but the larger order harmonics, they are we are using the filters, and they are not allowed to enter in the system. But at the same time, some of the harmonics they enter in the system, and we don't have any control over that. The major problem with the harmonics, if they are entering the system, they will they will create more loss in the system. Means core loss will be more. There will be I square R loss maybe also more. And at the same time, there may be some possibility of the resonance with the rest of the AC power system, and that is very very dangerous. Another problem with the HV DC system is the blocking of reactive power. Means here, the as we know, this if AC system is connected here, suppose we have this is one area and we have another area. This is connected by your DC system. so the reactive power generated in this area cannot be transmitted to this area too because this dc there is no reactive power transfer so this blocks the reactive power of any of the area means it will be here from area 1 it will not flow to area 2 or from area 2 it will not come to the area 1 now question why we want the reactive power sometimes in the emergency cases let's suppose there is some generator outage some some of the emergency in this there is some fault at that time we may require some reactive power support from the area 1 or 12 but it will block here so it is not possible to transmit the reactive power to the uh, area 2 or from 2 to 1 during the emergency condition so it blocks the reactive power but in the normal practice we don't allow the reactive power should flow from one remote place to another remote place because the reactive power concept is the localized concept and it is related with the voltage of the system another major problem in the hv dc system is the it is not possible to go for go for the tapping of the power at the different location means it is only that we can go for the point to point transmission means here from one node here we are going another node then the power which is flowing from here it will be going here it is not possible to tap the power in between so it is not possible in ac system you know the once wire is going anywhere you can tap the power this is the problem of hvdc system why it is so because here the control which is one here this station converter station and here converter station they operate in the synchronous means here the information and here it will be the same means we require a very strong communication link between these two converting converter stations so if the power is here going you are taking then the this we have to coordinate this another here some converting station so what happens till now although there are some researches going on that we can go for the multi uh, multi point transmission or multi uh, terminal hvdc transmission system if we are having only here from one end here the dc to here another it is called two terminal dc system. if you are taking here another dc system here you are taking here three phase here three phase and here we are having three phase so this is called multi terminal hvdc so so far we have established only the three terminal hvdc system so this is one of the major problem of the uh, dc system as well so here the point to point transmission is not possible uh, is uh, only possible in the dc system however in the ac you can tap the power anywhere in the system now let us see the your complex this system now we have seen that the generation must be your ac system because it is economical convenient and the cheap 
to generate. At the same time, the utilization part or you can say distribution or uh, load type, uh, we should go for the AC system. Now the question again only the remain open for the transmission system. Means we can go for your AC as well as the DC system. We saw the several advantages of your DC system compared to AC system. So then we can go for the AC and DC systems. Uh, just we saw witness that the early power system development was very much localized. Means generator as well as the loads were very close together. But we realized that there was a continuous development of the voltages as well as the frequency. Then we had the standards for the voltage as well as the frequency and we went for the integration of the system. So that we keep on integrating, we keep on adding the power system. So the present day power system is a complex interconnected and also it is varying in the size and con configuration. Now again the question uh, arises: why we started the interconnecting whole this generators as well as the, your load centers along with the transmission line. If you will see this interconnected power system have several advantages. Advantage include that in interconnected system that the total reserve capacity can be reduced. So the advantage here first advantage advantage of your interconnected interconnected power system first it reduces the reduce, uh, reserve capacity means reduces reserve capacity now if you will see in the for example let us take a generating station here this is our 50 megawatt to understand the reserve capacity as just I am explaining here and we have a load somewhere here. We have another let us suppose load is your wiring that is your 30 megawatt and we have another station here that is it is supplying here 50 megawatt and here your load uh, generator should be more than 50 megawatt. Now what happens now why we go for more because there is load is increasing we are going for the more reserve margins here. Now, here also we have the 50 megawatt and our generating capacity should be more than 50 megawatt. Sorry. So, if you, you can connect these two system, now what will happen, even though here this your load is 70, there is no need of this generator. Means as here same generator can supply here and still we have the 30 megawatt reserve. So, the due to the interconnection, we can reduce the reserve margin of the system are therefore means we can reduce the installed capacity of the power system by the interconnecting. This is the one of the major advantage. Another advantage is that the capital cost, the capital cost, capital cost per kilowatt is less for the larger unit. So with the help of interconnections we can go for the larger units and therefore we can reduce the total installation cost of the power system and therefore it is possible to have the cheaper electricity generation. So the total capital cost if you are going for the interconnected system so we can increase the capacity of generators we can go for the larger and larger size that is why right now you can say the we have even our India we have the generating a single unit can generate more than 500 megawatt. And this is due to the interconnection because not, none of any city is having even though in UP or somewhere you can see in more than 500 megawatt. So with the interconnections we can reduce the capital cost of the power system. Third advantage that here that it is a possible because uh, you know this loads here this is a keep on changing and therefore if the load is very minimum let us suppose here load has reduced to your 20 megawatt here and this 20 means only we can run only one unit of generation. So it is a possible that we can we can run the most effective unit at the higher load factor and the inefficient station can be used at the peak hours only. So what will happen again the total cost of the electricity generation will be reduced. Another 
advantage of interconnection that that interconnection reduces the requirement of high installed capacity the load curves of the two different stations are seldom identical and the maximum demand is the less than the sum of the maximum demand of the individual stations for the two different areas the maximum demand you can see they will seldom occur at the same time for our indian system if you will see that we have the our peak demand that is a 30 minutes difference from the northeast state to the central state so the peak which occurs here at the 8 pm it will occur somewhere it is a 7:30 pm in the northeast so what happens then we can interconnect the power system and that will reduce the install total install capacity of the power system also by doing the interconnected power system we can improve the reliability and that is here your this fourth is your it uh, reduces this install capacity install capacity and fifth advantage here is here that is a improve improves the reliability of the system reliability of the system and your third word the was the effective use effective use of generating generators you can say so it can improve the reliability of the system now we can see how it can improve the reliability of the system for example let's suppose earlier it was here it was not having interconnected if there was something problem in this generator if this generator is stripped your this 20 megawatt load it completely it is not possible that we can feed this supply so the reliability of this system even though the tripping or there is some problem in this generating station here it will be not once it is stripped it is not possible to supply this 20 megawatt so the reliability of this system it depends upon your this reliability of this generating station but if we can interconnect here here by this one even though this generator is stripped and there is some problem it is a possible to feed this power through this transmission line and to this here but there is a possibility that this generator may not be capable of supplying complete power but we can maintain some of the emergency services of the system here means we can fit some of the power or we can reduce the power in this area and finally we can supply it so this reliability of the system is improved with the interconnection of the system now there are several problems in the interconnection no doubt if we have in any system if, if we have some advantages there will be some problems or disadvantages as well the first disadvantage or drawback of the interconnection is that fault in one system will get propagated into the another system for example here if there is some fault here and there is a fault here at this bus what will happen this will be propagated here and this generator as well as this generator both generator will be tripped so the fault in one system it getting here in other system it will be propagated and that's why here it is sometimes very very dangerous we should have a very fast and reliable protecting device so that we can trip here we can trip here this line and we can we cannot allow this fault to propagate and transmit in this show but if we assume that if there is a no interconnection here and the fault is occurring here okay this system will be in dark and we can maintain the power supply in this system here and this both are operating in isolation so here the fault as i said if it is interconnected here this will be then fault will be coming here and to have the more reliable power system complete there should not be complete collapse we should have the protective devices here and so that it can isolate the faults and then we can maintain the remaining part of the system in the healthy so we saw the first major problem of the interconnection is that fault gets transfer to the other healthy areas and for that we should require the very fast and the reliable switch gear that is including your circuit breaker and the uh, protecting devices so that it should not get propagated another problem in this ac interconnection system is that that the high switch gear rating 
is to be implied at the different point of the system. It means if you are keep on interconnecting the power system. For example, here if you are having this is your bus and here we are having the different lines. Then the rating of here the circuit breaker, this circuit breaker, we require the higher rating. Means if you are keep on inter inter interconnecting more, suppose you are adding another line, then the rating of this circuit breaker may change. This is due to the fault level that will increase here at this bus will be increasing. So, if you are keep on interconnecting, then the circuit breaker requirement will be keep on increasing. The example which we took, if we, the, we saw here one generator and it was supplying here the load and similarly another generator was here and it was supplying load at, at this here. If you are connecting this one as like this, so the rating of this circuit breaker earlier which was using, now we have to increase because the fault level at this point is increased. So, we are going for the more circuit breakers here more the transmission lines and circuit breakers, more switch gear equipment. At the same time, the rating of the switch gear equipment also increases. Uh, the third problem now is the proper management uh, required to dispatch these generating stations. So, here what we require that there should be some energy management system and it is automated so that we can operate these generating generator 1 here and generator 2 in the economical fashion. So, we require the interconnected and the uh, sophisticated tool that is power management in this power system. As you know it is only two generators, but in an actual power system there may be 10 to 100 generators and it is so many transmission lines as well as the transformers. So, it is very much required that we should operate the power system in a such a efficient and also to dispatch these generating stations in the economical manner. So, normally for that we go for the economic load dispatch as well. Now, you can see here in the power system that is a more and more interconnected. We are having even the more than 100 generating stations and generators. So, we require some generators should run as the base load means they should continuously run. Some generators may require to run only at the peak load and again this category basically depends upon that what is the cost of that generator or the available fuel. For example, a uh, runoff river generator means this is a hydro type in hydro here we have the different like let's suppose hydro generators generators we have your runoff river type of generator we have the pondage type that is a pondage or storage and another is called the pump storage storage type of hydropower station ROR is nothing that is called runoff river run of river hydropower plants means it normally if uh, rivers are flowing they are at the different small dams are there and we utilize these power. Suppose if you are not utilizing that power what will happen this will go in the west. So, the run of rivers they always use at the base load plant means whenever this river is flowing you have to utilize otherwise this energy will be going in the west. So, this ROR will be used at the base power base load power plants like the pond is we can store the water and then we can utilize whenever it is required. So, this pond is can be depends upon the your storage capacity you can use at the base load as well as the peak load, but the pump storage power plant this is the plant this is a hydro power plant they only use for the peak load means when there is a demand we use it and when there is a less demand we can feed it water back to the storage. So, this is called pump storage. So, it is always used as the peak peak load power plant. Other the conventional power plants if you will see now again we have to come what are the conventional power plants and what are the non-conventional power plant. The conventional power plants include your thermal power stations the big thermal power stations we also go for the gas base power plants and here it is a diesel power plant they are known as the conventional power plant. Other than these power plants here they are called the non-conventional. Here hydro also comes big hydro power plants they come under the conventional power plant. In the non-conventional power plants other and they are also called the green power like your solar, wind, fuel cells they are coming into your the non-conventional and they also call it the green power because they create less pollution to the environment. So, here the thermal basically they use the coal and then we 
burn the coal and then we generate the steam and steam becomes the media of the transfer of power from heat to again go for the mechanical that turbine we run and then turbine runs the generator and then finally we generate the electricity. So this is this power plant can again run both as peak as well as your base load plant. However, your the diesel as you know the diesel cost is more than coal so it always run at the peak load power plant. Your gas is also it is very quick in starting. Here in the thermal power station it is not quick in starting normally a thermal power station if it is in the hot roll state means it is running state then it can require even the 4 to 5 hours. If it is in the cold state means all the boilers is there is no heat in the boiler etc. So it is called cold roll state and then it may require 7 to 8 hours. So here the thermal stations requires more. So it is not possible quickly you can turn it on. It requires some time. But the gas and diesel they are very quick and we can start. So they can be used for the peak load power plants. Another is your here the nuclear that is very important and nowadays our government is very keen to go for the more nuclear power plants as now we have the limited gas, limited diesel, limited coal. So, the option that we can go for the nuclear because hydro is also very limited, limited in the sense that we are facing a lot of hesitations for the dams and other things because they are the environmentalist people. They are always opposed that we should not build the large dams so that there are so many areas of summers and the, they are creating a lot of problems. So, the another option is the nuclear and we have the huge reserve of thorium as well as the uranium. So, the nuclear power plants they can also run as the base power plant and they normally run as the base power plant because here the nuclear due to the safety in other regions it is not possible to quickly stop and quickly turn it on. So, here and the cost of generation of the nuclear power station the cost of generation is very very cheap but the total cost is very high because we go for the very safety factor and again people are very much afraid about the nuclear power plant. But now we have the future for the nuclear power plants as well. So always here the operation of the power plants depends upon the following criteria that the cheaper electricity gener uh, generating units should be used as a base power plant. The highest starting time generating plant is also used as the base power plant and the size on the plants is also a decisive factor means what is the size? If the size is very small then quickly you can start and stop but if the large size then we may require large time as well. So this in interconnected power system the generators as I said they are normally loaded they are running based on the these criteria that which will be running at the base and which will be running as the peak load. Some of them may run for the both purpose again depending upon the requirement of the system. Now we witness that now power system is highly complex, interconnected and the, the, due to the increased loading of the power system, it is always our intention to operate power system in most of the reliable, secure and stable condition so that we can supply the power to the customers in the reliable and also our intention is to supply the cheap means the, the economical electricity to the customers. In India the power system in the most of the state, states are owned and operated by electricity boards. Now again these electricity boards are broken into the different boards. So earlier this whole this generation, transmission and the distribution was in the state was responsible. It was responsible means by basically the state electricity boards. They were operating your generating stations, transmission lines as well as the distribution system. And again we have presently the five regional electricity boards. One is your Northern Regional Electricity Board, another is Western Regional Electricity Board and your Southern like we have your NREB that is called Northern Regional Electricity Board, we have the Western Regional Electricity Board, we have the Southern Regional Electricity Board, we have Elec uh, Eastern Regional Electricity Board, we have North Eastern Regional Electricity Board. So, in India we have the five regional electricity board means in Northern Electricity Regional Boards we have the several states they are interconnected and this includes your Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Delhi, Punjab, Rajasthan, Jammu and Kashmir, 
छत्तीस चंडीगढ़ उत्तर प्रदेश एंड उत्तरांचल सिमिलरली वी हैव द वेस्टर्न रीजनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड विद सेवरल स्टेट्स आर इंटरकनेक्टेड इन द वेस्टर्न रीजनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड इट इज गुजरात मध्य प्रदेश महाराष्ट्र गोवा दमन दीव दादर नगर हवेली एंड योर छत्तीसगढ़ स्टेट दे आर कमिंग इन द वेस्टर्न रीजनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड द सदर्न रीजनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड कंप्राइज कर्नाटका आंध्र प्रदेश केरला तमिलनाडु पांडिचेरी एंड द लक्षद्वीप इन द ईस्टर्न रीजनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड इट इज बिहार अंडमान निकोबार वेस्ट बंगाल सिक्किम ओडिशा एंड द झारखंड दे आर कमिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टेट दे आर इंटरकनेक्टेड एंड देन वी आर ऑपरेटिंग द पावर सिस्टम इन द रीजनल बेसिस एंड दीज रीजन आर ऑल्सो नाउ गेटिंग इन टू दे आर गेटिंग कनेक्शन इंटरकनेक्टेड सो मोस्ट ऑफ द रीजन ऑलरेडी दे नॉर्दर्न एंड द वेस्टर्न रीजनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड दे आर इंटरकनेक्टेड नाउ द गोल ऑफ इंडिया दैट वी शुड हैव अर नेशनल ग्रेट means all this here regional electricity board must be interconnected and then we can again we can supply and with this in grid we can operate our system efficiently again the different state even though your this northern uh, regional electricity board and the western regional electricity board they comprise together more than 60% of your electric installed capacity means they are having the lion's share and the remaining here 40% comes under the southern region eastern region and the northern eastern northern eastern region basically comprise of assam arunachal pradesh meghalaya nagaland tripura and the mizoram so here we have a good potential of hydro in these regions and they have they are having the surplus amount of power however other regions mostly here the western and northern they are in the deficit of power so now we are just trying to have the interconnection from the northern region and northern eastern region to other regions so that we can transmit power from the north north eastern region to the deficit area that is western and the northern region again now we can see here the interconnection now we can summarize the how our power system is interconnected we can see here we have the different generating stations like here generating station generating station generating station we have the several generating station and we have seen that generating stations cannot generate power at the higher voltage till now in india we have the highest voltage generation of 21 kV however in the world it is 33 kV but we know that if you are going for higher voltage the losses in the system is less and at the same time we can transmit bulk amount of power so our intention to keep on increasing already i just i give information about the evolution of power system there we saw that the increasing in the voltage level in the transmission system it is witness that we have to go for the higher voltage transmission system to reduce the loss and to transmit bulk amount of power so these generating stations they generate power and then we use the generating state uh, generating transformer it is normally called the gt near to it is very near to this generating stations so they a uh, step up the voltage of these generating like here i have written here 21 kv here some of the generating stations they are generating at the 11 kv normally the 500 class of megawatt generators they are generating at the 21 kv here the 21 kv means it may be 20 it may be 21 point something means the per unit voltage is 21 those are here 200 megawatt or 220 megawatt generating station they normally generate at the 16 kv and the remaining that is 100 r 110 megawatt generating stations the generating voltages are normally 11 kv or so so we use the generating uh, generating transformer to lift the voltage either at the 400 or at 220 kv or even at 132 kv depending upon the evacuation of power from the generating station our ultimate aim that these generating powers must come to the our small customers and then it will follow the transfer transmission lines it also sub transmission system and then it is here the primary distribution means this is a distribution system so our the integrated uh, transmission system it is having presently we have the 800 kv transmission system 220 kv transmission system and 132 kv transmission system presently we have our the transmission line that is built constructed at the 765 kv class of insulation normally it is called 800 kv transmission system but the presently it is operating at the 400 kv 
transmission system. We have the Anpara and Unnao line, it is very near to us. It is, the line is built on 800 kV class of insulation and but presently it is operating at the 400 kV, is, you know, 400 kV bolt because later it is assumed, uh, it is uh, uh, required of the more power evacuation, we can go for the higher voltage. Once line is constructed, only we have to change the terminal equipment of this rating. Then we have the, in this system, we have the several interconnecting transformers. They may be a 400 by 220, 220 by 132 and so on and so forth. So, these are the transformers that are existing and normally they are called ICTs, power transformers. Then from lower voltage, we go for this other transformers and then we try to reduce the voltage at the lower voltage. It may be directly 66 kV, it may be 33 kV, the distribution side and we also feed power to the large customers at the higher voltage as well. Even though some of the, our customers, they take like your railway, take power, takes power at 132 kV. Even though some big companies like the Fertilizer Corporation of India, FCI, they also take power at 132 kV. So, we have the intertie lines and also we supply to the very, very large and the large customers, those require power at very high voltage as well as the high power. Also, we go for the medium type of voltages and the medium customers, they take the power at 33 kV or 25 kV like your railway, the traction purpose, they normally use 25 kV and the 11 kV transformer. At the same time, you can see there are some small generating units. These small generating units, they are nothing but uh, they are the, maybe the captive power plant or nowadays there is another concept that is called the distributed generators, they are coming into the distribution side so that we can reduce the transmission, you can say TND losses, etc. And finally here after that transformation, we have the two type of dis distribution system again can be classified in terms of the primary distribution and the secondary distribution. Secondary distribution is your 400 volt and it is of three phase and single phase it is uh, under uh, 400 divided by under 3, that is we get the 220 volt supply and it is finally given to the small customers. So, the medium customers can take the any voltage more than even the 400, but the small customers they take here. So, this is overall practice of you can say the structure of the power system. We have the generating stations, then we lift the voltage with the help of generating stations and then we have the different interconnecting transformers and then finally it is reaching to the small customers as well as the other customers. So, nowadays there is a lot of people are interested in the small generating units and we are putting in the distribution system to improve the system performance and this is called the distributed generator. We will see again the various advantages of the distributing, uh, distributed generators in later lectures. So, with this now I can conclude, I can recap, we saw the evolution of power system how we just earlier we had isolated power system with the different voltages, it was AC and DC, finally it came to the DC, AC and then we interconnected all the system and now uh, our generators are mostly the AC, the utilization is AC, but your this system that is a transmission part is includes your AC as well as DC power system. So, this is highly complex power system that is the generation is AC, utilization is AC, however the transmission part is AC as well as DC. And since the, our demand is keep on increasing, we are keep on adding the generating station, this system becomes very complex and very nonlinear in nature. Thank you.